Good day, Jeffrey Friedman coming to you from RJO Futures. My morning comments on stock index futures. August 23rd, Friday in the dog days of summer. Now, the word of the day, and I always give you the word of the day, is going to be still tapering. Are we tapering sooner than later or later than sooner? We'll get to that in a minute. On the docket today and today alone was new home uh, sales, very bearish, down 13%. They revised last month. Right now, that implies that some of our economic reports are not doing so well or the economy is not growing quite as well as the FOMC uh, guys think, and they might slow down on the thought of tapering. Things on the docket to measure where we are. Okay, one would be China. Are they pulling out of their slowdown or not? We've had different reports. So one week they are, one week they are not. Europe, how strong or weak? Japan, how strong or weak? And basically the concept is global economy is slowing down and we were the strong man standing. And if we're not growing, and of course we're, we're under... 2% in the GDP. So on a long-term looking, we've been in a bull market for five years and we were at, at the high of this year, we were up 19%. You gotta remember, we pulled back. We've been choppy since May because of the verbiage from the FOMC, okay? First, they're gonna taper and they're gonna start to taper aggressively. The stock index futures pull back dramatically, maybe five, 6%. Then they start tap dancing and say, no, it's not going to be right away. We rally back up. Obviously, there's probably, in my opinion, 7 to 11% of growth of appreciation in the stock index futures because of the help from the Federal Reserve. So uh, more important than one report is what will they do, and that should last a long time. When will they start the tapering? That's the real key here, okay? Will they start in September? Will they start in November, December, or will it be the first quarter of next year, okay? And that's the big debate. That's where we're coming and going. We've come off of a two-week pullback from the highs, 19%. Now we're up about 15%. The reason I bring that up is because you have to go back more than a year, year and a quarter, where we had three weeks in a row of lower closes for the week. We've had two in a row where if we break another five points from where we're trading right here in the September S&P future contract, it would be a lower close. And that would be kind of a significant that the vote is in that they're going to start to taper in September. OK, so here, let me give you some numbers that you can kind of put your hat on. Obviously, if we can close above 1665-ish around that area, that would be kind of good, but that would not change the short-term downtrend down. That would be reserved for 1680, in my opinion, on a closing basis uh, two days in a row or for the week. On the way down, obviously, uh, 40 was kind of a pivot area for the pivot traders. Um, still looking at the September uh, S&P future contract, these numbers, because it's the broader index, I like to concentrate on that. That's where the biggest volume is on all three of the stock index futures. So, have said that, that gives you the truer value of movement, uh, in my opinion. So, uh, the next level would be 1628, 1617, and obviously 1599 to 1600. Remember, what you want to keep your mind on is if we rally today or early next week, 1680 is your pivot area. I think that the bears are still in control. A very weak housing report today might give you the thought that they'll wait till the end of the year or the beginning of next year, and they're not satisfied with the reports coming out. That's how that should be interpreted. Remember always, trading futures or option to futures involves risk of loss, not suitable for everyone. Good luck, good trading.